Alright, so here we are entering the gauntlet. I'm not really sure why it's called the gauntlet. Gauntlet is normally something you run, I think. Uh, this is more something you kind of claw and inch your way through and hope you don't die in the process. It's pretty awful. One of my least favorite parts of the game, I would think. However, I'm used to doing it without that first energy tank we got. This is actually the first time I've gotten that energy tank because I didn't know you could do that until just a few days ago. So, um, it's actually pretty cool. Try it out. Definitely a lot easier than normal. And you'll notice that the uh, acid here pretty much eats your health away instantly. Um, yeah, you kind of want to avoid that. That's pretty much the main focus here, is just to stay away from that acid and those little claw dudes that would pull you into it. Um, you're going to need to do some wall jumping. At least in my experience, you will. But there are some areas that are just so low you can't get to a platform or whatnot like you can here. You can stand. However, some places you need to wall jump or else you're going to be boiling in that acid. So, you want to stay away from that. Um, however, once you get to this room, you get that second energy tank, it's, it's pretty much a cakewalk from this point. This might be the only place that gives you trouble, just because there are no platforms that are terribly out of reach of the acid, so you're going to want to do some wall jumping until you can finally bomb your way through there, and you're home free. It's not that long, it's pretty short. Uh, if you do a speed run, you want to shoot the blocks like that. Um, to help blow them all up at once. Save just a second or two, but those seconds add up after a while. Also, when you're falling through the crumbling blocks, make sure you get right in the middle so you can do them both at once and you won't have to go through the gauntlet again to get this other set of missiles over here, so don't want to miss out on that. Now we're going to get another energy tank, which is always nice. Oh, you can actually blow up these walls there, but there's nothing but a few annoying enemies behind there. Fleas, I think they are, that kind of latch onto you and suck your energy out. Like Metroid, but less awesome. Okay, when you're coming through these space pirates, your beam won't hurt them. So you can use your missiles to destroy them, but you want to make sure that you have at least 10 missiles left by the time you get here. Because you're going to need them really soon, and you don't want to waste them. You don't want to waste time getting um, other missiles, like collecting them from enemies. Um, I mean, you can, if you want, but for a speed run, we're talking about. Most of the time, I'll be talking about speed runs. I like to do things fast, so I try to save time when I can. Okay, here we're going to use a mock ball. If you didn't hear me explain a mock ball earlier, you run like that, jump just before you get to the door, tap down, and then roll your thumb forward, the down button to the forward position, kind of like you're doing a Hadouken in Street Fighter, and do um, that just as you hit the ground, you continue to roll forward uh, with all the speed you had when you were dashing. So make sure you're dashing as you run towards the area you want to jump into, and um, Takes a little bit of practice. Once you get it down, it's kind of like riding a bike. Pretty easy after that. Now, um, you'll notice I just got a reserve tank here. One of the more useless items in the game. I'm not really sure why they exist. I don't see why there could have just been more energy tanks, but anyway, we're trying to get as much as we can because we do need those reserve tanks. And up here is the main reason we went in this room early. Super missiles. Getting these here saves us a lot of time. We can skip an entire mini boss, which uh, would usually take a few minutes to get through. And we can get these missiles here as well, just to pick them up. Don't really need them, but yeah. Getting the super missiles here. Um, whoever figured that out. I saved countless Super Metroid players a lot of time. Now this part here, um, this 
probably one of my favorite areas of the game. This pink Brent Star area. I'm not really sure why. Maybe it's all that crap falling in the background. I just like how it looks. I don't know. I'm not sure if this music is very fitting for it. It seems more like a peaceful place, but whatever. These missiles, you don't have to get now because we're going to be coming back here later in the game and pick ourselves up a few power bombs, but I can always get them now. No reason not to. These next set of super missiles that we're going to get, um, they actually are the first ones that you're supposed to get if you're following the intended sequence of the game. However, if you do just as I do here, can't really explain it, stop there, turn around, move up, just so you're inside this little circle thing, um, the screen will move forward just enough that you can shoot the super missile block inside of that, um, inside of that passageway, and that lets you get through here to these super missiles up here, so, that saves a lot of time, and you can get these again without beating Spore Spawn. That's the mini boss I was talking about earlier. Once we get out of here, we'll be getting the charge beam. Charge beam is one of the most important items in the game. It's kind of hard to miss, but if you do, you're screwed if you fight any bosses and run out of missiles. Because uh, without the charge beam, you can't hurt the bosses. Kind of sucks. They make it fairly obvious that it's there. It's kind of hard to miss that, but I'm sure plenty of people did. I'm not really sure why it's called the charge beam. It's more like a charge attachment. Charge, or charge that thing. I don't know. It just helps out the rest of your beams. Unfortunately, not. One of its own. These missiles up here are uh, something else you can get with wall jumping. Normally you would use the high jump boots for that. Sometimes I wonder if the game designers put all this stuff in here on purpose. Like the wall jumping, they had to know that you can skip so much stuff by using that. Yeah, I just kind of wonder what's intentional and what's not. I'm sure there are plenty of things they didn't intend to happen, but I'm glad they did. Anyway, getting up here, uh, is my favorite part of the game, the Red Brand Star. Not sure why, but I like this place a lot. Anyway, we'll be getting the power bombs early. One of the most difficult things of getting up here is, or, is avoiding these, uh, bug things. I don't know what these are. Normally you would freeze them and turn them into platforms, but we don't have the ice beam, so now they're just kind of in the way. In this part, we're going to be doing spike boosting, as you can see. Uh, you jump into the spike, and as soon as you hit it, you hold backwards. Well, you have to be faced the opposite direction that you want to go. Then when you hit it, you hold backwards at pretty much the same time, or just after, and you'll propel yourself backwards across the area. Um, there are a few opportune places to use that. Not many, but again, saving yourself some time. This this is probably my least favorite room in the game. Maybe not least. There's some pretty awful places in Meridia, but I don't know. I, I usually waste about a minute of time in here trying to get past these little jumping yellow booger things. But once you do, you get the power bombs for the first time, a set of missiles. And that's all we have for this video, so hopefully you'll join me next time and see what happens.